welcome to the Made for Business show where Catholic moms come to learn how to create financial freedom for their families. I'm your host, Sterling Jaquith, and today we're going to be talking about whether or not you have a good business idea. And there are three questions I want you to ask yourself to determine if you have a good business idea. So number one, does it come from God? Right? That's the first thing we always, always do. We spend time in prayer. We ask the Lord. We say, I'm feeling this kind of niggling, this kind of poking about this idea. Maybe it's been on your heart for years, but something is bringing it to the forefront right now. Right? And so you just want to make sure it comes from God. We're not making decisions from scarcity or feeling scared. Right? There's no fear. We're just like, you know what, Lord, I'm feeling that you're calling me to business and you're calling me to a business about this thing. So maybe it's giving you a sense of an industry or a target market or a product, right? But you're feeling kind of this stirring, this calling from the Lord. So always start there. Does it come from the Lord? The next question I want you to ask yourself is who is the target market? And what is the product? And I ask this as one question because it kind of goes together. And you want to take a piece of paper out and you want to really ask yourself, who am I selling to and what product am I selling them? And you're going to kind of tweak these a little bit, right? So if there were levers, we're going to kind of like push one up a little bit and slide one down a little bit. And we're going to kind of be moving these around until something kind of clicks. And then as you ask yourself the third question, you might come back up and revise this part. Okay. So who is your target market? And I read, um, in hundred million dollar offers by Alex Hormozzi. Um, he says there was a professor and this professor said, if you were going to open up a hot dog stand and you could have one advantage over your competitors, what advantage would you want? And some of them said having the best location or the highest quality or the lowest price or the best tasting hot dogs, right? These were what the students said. And he said, you know what I would choose? A starving audience, right? We want clients who want what we have. Right? We want to pick a target market that has enough money to buy what we're selling and wants what we have. We want to solve a problem that they have. And so when you're considering who you're serving, you can ask yourself, what is a big problem that they have? So, you know, if you're serving, you know, moms who have young kids, maybe it's potty training, maybe it's sleep training them. Right. If you're serving, you know, moms with teenagers, maybe it's communicating with them, uh, managing screen time. If you're serving, you know, single women who are just out of college, you know, what is their biggest challenge? How can you help them? So you're thinking about this target market and you're thinking about a product. And I kind of go back and forth between those two for a little while until I feel like I land on something that makes a lot of sense. And again, you don't want to have a target market that doesn't have money. And don't be afraid. Don't make that assumption, by the way, because a lot of you will say, well, Catholics don't have a lot of money or moms don't have a lot of money. And you'll just make up a story about that, especially if it's your own story. And that may or may not be true, right? But we certainly don't want to be selling a Lexus product to somebody that can afford a Hyundai. Right? We want to pick a target market and create a product that makes sense for them and solves a problem that they'd be willing and able to pay for. Okay, So then let's take it to the third one, and then we'll kind of go back up to the second one in a minute. So the third one is to do the math. Do the math on how much money you want to make. And I really like you to start at $5,000 a month. Right? I used to say, oh, I only want to make $500 a month. But remember, that's jobby money. right? That's like side hustle, a little bit of fun money. But we're here to build six-figure businesses. And that really starts with consistent 5K months. When you start making consistent 5K months in your business, 
you have enough resources to kind of pay for some of the things that you need and to take care of business without feeling stressed about, oh, now I have to pay for my Zoom account or my Vimeo account, right? Maybe you can pay for a little bit of help around your house or with childcare, right? So I like that $5,000 a month. Place some of you are already the place where you're targeting eight or $10,000 a month, which is great. So just do the math on what you wanna make um, in the near future, right? We're not capping you out at that. We're just doing the math on an idea. All right, so let's just sit with $5,000 a month. And then you go back and you ask yourself, um, you know, that product that I'm thinking of serving that target market, you know, what's the math on that? So let's say that you want to serve um, women who struggle with infertility. I was just coaching somebody on that the other day, and you want to create a course for them. Okay. And so you could create a course for $47. A lot of people like the price point 47, 97 or 197. There's some psychology behind that. I don't know how really important that is, but a lot of, you know, big online sellers choose those, those price points. So let's just go with them for a minute. So let's say you're going to sell like a mini workshop kind of thing for $47. Well, you would need to sell 107 of those a month hit $5,000. You want to ask yourself, can I find 107 people consistently every month to buy my $47 thing? Now, if you were selling, um, you know, the no brainer guide to potty training, you know, my three-year-old boy, boom, you could sell that all day long. You could definitely sell 107 of those a month, right? Now, if we're selling it to women struggling with infertility, I almost feel like that price point is too low. The pain of struggling with infertility or secondary infertility is so high that they they probably need more than you can give them at $47, okay? So let's do the next price point. Let's say $197. So now we're selling it for a little bit more and you know we're giving them more resources. Maybe they get a little bit of access to you for that. Not much for $197. Um, and you need to only sell 25 of those a month to hit $5,000. And that's starting to feel more doable. Like you could probably find 25 women, um, that are struggling with that. Now, if you're selling a $2,000 course, you only need to sell two or three. Now, of course you're like, of course, Sterling, if it's $2,000, I only need a couple of those, but I want to show you that the higher we price things, often the more serious people take them and the more we're able to serve our clients to get them the results that we want. They are not buying you. They are not buying your course. They are not buying your slides. They are not buying your PDF. They are buying a result. They are showing up to you and they're saying, I have a problem and I want a result. Or I have a goal and I want a result. It's either one of those two things. You're either solving a problem for them or you're helping them reach a goal. That's what they're buying. We're not selling them on the features of your course or weekly group coaching or a private Facebook group. They don't care about any of that. They just want to know, can you solve my problem? And often, the more we charge for things, the more we can help them solve their problem. And so if I asked you, if I said, could you build a really beautiful course with group coaching and maybe a one-on-one -on -one coaching session once a month to help this woman who's struggling with infertility and give her a lot of attention for 90 days, and then she can stay within a community of women who are struggling with the same thing, how much service can you provide? at $2,000 and would she pay it? Now, there's a whole lot of space between $47 and $2,000. And I'm not suggesting one is better than the other, but I want you always to do the math. Because if you do the math and you get to the place where you're like, well, I'd have to sell 107 of these a month to make $5,000, does that sound reasonable? Usually, you can convert 2% of your email list. 2% is a pretty standard number. So if you only have 500 people, 
let's do a thousand. If you only have a thousand people on your email list, which is a lot. Some of you are like, I don't have a thousand on my email list. So I don't want you to feel discouraged about that. I'm just using that number for math. Then you'll probably sell 20 of them. Right. And then you'll have to get more people on your email list and sell 2% of them. And so do the math on what you're thinking of offering and just see, can this create a stable job for me? And can I deliver what I need to deliver for that price point? And then also I want you to do the math on how much time would it take me to serve that many clients? Now, let's say you're a one-on-one -on -one coach and it's $2,000 for three months of coaching with you, and but you only want to work 10 hours a week. And so you need maybe two hours of admin time. Let's say you do two discovery calls a week, which is how you sell the coaching. That leaves you six hours to do coaching. So you could max out at six clients. And so then you can ask yourself, okay, if I get six clients, the way it would work is they would pay you $2,000 for three months. So you would get $12,000, but if we divide that by the three months that you're serving them, it's $4,000 a month. So you kind of, if you're only wanting to work 10 hours, you'd kind of cap out at $4,000 a month to serve these six clients. And that may be totally fine, but we have to do the math on what am I creating? How much time is it going to take me? How much time am I willing to put in? And so you can see there's like this puzzle piece in the beginning where we're refining our target market, we're thinking about their problems and the products we could create to serve them. And then we're looking at our time and what we're willing to dedicate to this business. Now, some of you are gonna be creating physical products. And so you're gonna have to run the math on that, right? If I want to sell rosaries and it costs me $4 for all the stuff, and it costs me $8 for my time to make them, and I'm gonna sell them for $25. How much are you making per rosary? How many of those would you need to sell to make $5,000 a month? And I choose that as an example because I've coached a few women um, who wanted to do this, and we did the math, and they were like, oh. I was like, yeah, it's pretty difficult to get to 5,000 like that. Now you totally can. Shannon of Choose Life, had a totally different take on the rosary. She made the ones with the silicon beads that don't clank in the pews. And she did it as a pro-life thing. And she sells so many rosaries. And she probably makes way more than $5,000 a month. Right? Aroma Rosary does the same thing. They mix theirs with essential oils. And they sell them at a high price point to cover the oils and the beautiful rosaries. And so they can get to that place faster. So you just want to do the math. Everything is available, all these business models, but you want to ask yourself, what would it involve? Now, for those of you that want to monetize a blog or a podcast or a YouTube channel, you do that by getting ads and sponsors. Do a little bit of research of what that looks like because usually it takes a lot of putting in effort to grow your audience for usually two years, then it starts making some real money. And by real money, I mean a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars a month. Now, once you get to that place, it just brings that in. You kind of keep it going, but in a way it feels like passive income. You can't stop producing content, but you know, it's a great business model once you get it up there, but you have to ask yourself, am I willing to put in that time? So when we talk about your target market, and this is another thing, we also refer to this as your niche. You'll hear a lot of people say, what's your niche? I want you to get as specific as you can, because the more specific you get, the easier it is to reach them and the more money you'll make. So if I say, you know, I'm a life coach for women, you'd be like, oh, that's nice. But you probably wouldn't refer any clients to me. If I said, I'm a life coach for Catholic moms, you're like, oh, I know some Catholic moms and maybe you'd refer someone to me. But if I said, 
I'm a Catholic mom. I'm sorry. I'm a life coach for Catholic women who have lost their husbands. Now you're like, I know someone like that. You should, you should talk to Jan. She lost her husband in a car accident last year. I bet she could really use your help. The good niche is where somebody instantly thinks of someone, right? We want to make it so clear who you serve. And the more specific you are about who you serve, the easier it is to sell them and market to them. Word of mouth spreads faster and your marketing message is so specific, right? Like you could, um, you could serve Catholic women who have left the Mormon church and become Catholic. And you could say, I have a bunch of resources just for that small group of people. And listen, I talk a lot about Catholics as a, a target market. It certainly doesn't need to be that, right? You could serve all sorts of markets. I just happen to be um, surrounded by women who serve other Catholic women. So we're just talking about that all the time. But be so specific. And when you think of your target market, just ask yourself, can I niche down one more level? right? Just one more level about who you could target. And the more you do that, the more successful you will be. I promise. It seems like if we target more people, we could make more money because there's more people but there's just a lot more noise and it's hard to cut through the noise to get those people. And I see this a lot with um, Catholic moms. They want to target Christian women for two reasons. One, they're like, okay, there's more of them. They feel scarcity around how many Catholic women there are. And the other reason is because they have this idea that like, oh, maybe I could lead some of them to the church, which is a beautiful idea. Just check in with the Lord about whether or not he's asking you to do that through your business. Because we're all called to be evangelists. We're not all called to be evangelists through our business. Right? And I definitely thought I was going to do that. I definitely thought a big part of my story would be speaking to Protestants and converting them to Catholicism because that was my story. And it just ended up not being what God asked me to do. And every time I prayed and said, like, Lord, do you want me to serve Christian women or even Catholic women? Right? Because even I have niched down to moms. And, like, I could help. Christian women create businesses. I could help Catholic women, single women create businesses, but he has just always placed it on my heart to work with Catholic moms. And I just believe there are enough Catholic moms who need help growing their businesses that I could make an entire business around that. And then when you read about my marketing, I'm so clear on what their problem is, right? Guilt about the mom thing, work-life balance, communicating with their husband, right? Navigating that new role. Like I used to just take care of the house, but now I take care of the house and I also have this business and we have to communicate about that. It's so specific. And that's what I help Catholic moms do in their business. And so here are the three questions that help you answer whether you have a good business idea. One, does it come from God? Two, who's my target market and what product am I serving them? Three, do the math. How much money do I want to make? And then how many of those products would I have to sell to do that? And you may have one or two products or streams of income. Just do the math and say, is it even possible to get to five or $10,000 a month? And that will answer that for you quickly. Now you still can do market research. You can go do some testing. You could test out the product. You could go offer it to a couple people and then iterate and tweak that target market or the product. So that we're not carving this into stone, right? But this is just giving you that quick, like, is this even a good idea? Is this even in the realm of possibility? Does this make sense on paper? Later, we're going to talk about what a business plan looks like, but this is just a quick way to say, do I even have a good idea? Okay. So I'm going to say it one more time. Does it come from God? Who's the target market? And what product am I serving them? And then doing the math on how can I get to my income goals. All right, you guys, 
If you're more interested in finding out about how to do that and to set up your business, come join us in masters at madeforgreatness.co slash masters. That's my life coaching community. And I have a program in there called launch to 10 K where I give you all of the things that you need to get to your first $10,000 in business. So you can come join that membership and you can come do group coaching with me and all of the other moms in there who are budding entrepreneurs or successful entrepreneurs who are scaling their business. It's super fun. And I would love to see you there. All right, you guys get to work and have a blessed day.